But welcome back. This next story is one of resilience, patience, and love. In April of 2016, two-time Olympic high jumper Jamie Nieto was injured while demonstrating his signature backflip for a group of Olympic hopefuls. The injury caused paralysis from the chest down. And doctors predicted he'd only get back 30% of his bodily functions. But since then, he's done that and a lot more. The book of Psalms tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. For two-time Olympic high jumper Jamie Nieto, it's a passage he marches to every day. In April of 2016, he suffered a back injury while trying to demonstrate a back flip he'd done hundreds of times. The injury caused paralysis from the chest down. That moment when I hurt myself, you know how they say like your, your life flashes before your eyes? It was kind of that thing, you know? And I just tried to do my best just, just to, to, to keep praying and keep my mind on, on God and that he has a plan for me. In his prime, Jamie was America's best, able to leap over six feet with ease. And jump a personal best of seven feet, eight inches. That's over a foot taller than he is. But after the injury, he was a man once heralded for his athletic abilities, whose body lie dormant in a hospital bed. At the time, Jamie was dating two-time Olympian for the Jamaican team, Siobhan Stoddard, who was training for her third Olympics. And she dropped everything to be by Jamie's side. This was gonna be one of the biggest challenges that you know I've ever faced, and I know that he's ever faced, but it was a challenge that I knew, okay, God, because God doesn't give you anything that you can't face, that you can't handle. And if he put that on this plate, then I was going to step to it. After surgery, the doctors predicted that Jamie would only regain 30% of his body function. Jamie and Siobhan refused to believe that prognosis. We wouldn't accept that, and we're not accepting that. And we believe that God said, I'm going to make 100% recovery. But how? Jamie could barely breathe, let alone start to walk. Everything that I did was work. Everything that I did. Getting up, breathing, drinking, eating. I felt like I was going to die. After lying in bed for two weeks, unable to move, Jamie began rehab. The doctor came in and he said, uh, or the therapist came in and he said, uh, OK, we're going to stand up today. And in my mind, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I, you know, I don't know if I can stand up, you know. And, and, but outwardly and out of my mouth, I said, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Siobhan sacrificed the rest of her Olympic career to walk with Jamie on this journey. She was going to make sure he saw it through. I was there to push Jamie, you know, just the athletes as we are, you know, as visualizing when I remember he tried to move his hands and he couldn't, that visualization and repetition and doing things over and over um, until we got you know, little by little, we kept making gains. Jamie and Siobhan are Olympians, a rare breed of competitors who understand that the keys to success begin with the foundation of faith and controlling your thoughts. I always say pole vaulters and high jumpers, we have to be the most confident on the track because in our mind, we have to believe that we can clear a bar that we've never cleared before, you know, and then go over there and do it. You know, so, yeah, God has blessed me with that talent to be able to do that. And even now, like I said, you know, working with my uh, uh, abilities that I have right now, and as I was learning to walk in, again, I would visualize and I would see myself walking, and I still do that, see myself running, you know, and doing those things. And uh, I'm gonna keep doing that until they come to pass. After some time, Jamie and Siobhan got engaged and created a goal for Jamie to work towards. We created a goal that uh, I wanted to walk her down the aisle, you know, and I created that goal, but then she said, okay, well, it's going to take probably about 150 steps to get <laughs> out of the, uh, you know, uh, of the church. So I was like, okay, so I got to start working on my steps. And at this point in time, I was barely trying to take three steps, you know, falling, taking <laughs> three steps, you know. Now with a goal to achieve, Jamie went to work. So I started working on it and those three steps after a couple months, turn into six steps, and those six steps turn into 12, and 12 turn into 25, and 50. At times when it was challenging, 
Jamie had thoughts of giving in to his body, but Siobhan was there to give him a kick in the pants. There were many times when, you know, say Jamie couldn't do something and he, I would see the frustration, him getting frustrated, and I'd tell him, stop. It, it's not gonna be easy. This is gonna be hard, remember that. And we pushed through. Next thing you know, I'm at 100, you know? And I was like, yo, I, I did 150 or something like that. She's like, okay, great, now you gotta do two, 206. And I was like, 206. <laughs> <laughs> then on July 22nd, 2017, Jamie had reached his goal. God is great, you know, I was able to go to my wedding and, and uh, walk my, my beautiful wife down the aisle, which was an emotional and, and beautiful time. Since that day, Jamie continues to improve and he hasn't allowed his current limitations to slow him down. In fact, he's busier than ever, writing and acting for a couple of TV sitcoms. Siobhan has also been busy as a solo recording artist and recently released a single dedicated to Jamie. The name of the song, I wrote the song, it's called Through the Good and the Bad. It's just basically, you know, the lyrics as far as the verse, you know, it's through the years that we've had together. We built a love that would last. As Jamie continues to make strides, he and Siobhan are walking full of faith and purpose to shine God's light of hope in every way they can. I, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for God. I know that we would not have the strength. I would not be strong enough to do what I do if it wasn't for the strength that I have in him that has placed in me so that I can be there for Jamie. Love conquers all. I believe that when you have love and when we act out of love and caring for others, then anything is possible, not just in our relationship, but also in the world. As long as you keep God first, anything can happen, you know? Uh, everything will happen within his way, so, and, and I would say that would be the best thing that anybody can do in their life, you know? And everything will work out. It is all about vision, how you see it, and that is rooted in faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jamie wanted to walk his wife down the aisle, even though he was in a wheelchair. But he had to believe in faith that he could do it, then visualize himself actually taking the steps. 150 to be exact. Maybe a little more if you ask his wife, Siobhan. But faith in what God can do through you and having the vision to see it in your mind are the foundation to achieving success. We'll be right back, right after this. Well, welcome back. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Hey, in James chapter 2, it says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have the works? Can faith save him? In other words, Faith without works is dead. If Jamie Nieto can grind it out every day to reach his goal, you can too. So if you're sitting on the couch waiting for God to move and nothing's happening, it's probably because there's something that you need to be doing. So get it done, because life is short. Go the distance. See you next time.